I have been outside all day working on the coffee table. When is your next makeover video? Looks like it's a little lighter. Okay. The project you love and the project you regret. Ooh, living room mood board. <laughs> I'll show you the inspiration. I have a list of things that I'd like to do. Oh, that's a wasp. That's not inspiring to me at all. Hi guys, welcome back to the vlog. I'm sitting on a workout ball because that's all the seat that I had out here. Look, <laughs> literally, it's quite fun. I feel like, don't they have these for like, pro like your core or something when you work at your desk? Anyways, hi, I have been outside all day working on the coffee table. I am making lots of improvements on it. The one that we found at the flea market. Um, but it needs to go through various stages of sealer and um, dry time and things like that. So I'm kind of working on it, you know, every few hours or so. So I just put a sealer on it. It was looking really good. I can't wait to show you guys. Um, but I also, I just went to the hardware store to pick up some supplies. And also now that we're going into the living room, I have another stain that I need to match, another wood stain. It is different, similar, but different than what we did before because for the window boxes in the kitchen, it had more depth or darkness to it. So what I matched then isn't gonna work for this project now. Someone's blowing their leaves or something. Anyways, I went to the hardware store to Home Depot and they had the board of what, it, what the stains could look like. All of these. Now this is a deck exterior stain. It's could be semi-transparent or I think more, um, more solid, more like paint, if you will. So a semi-transparent puts more color on things, right? So it, it has more pigment. It, that's what I was having a hard time with, with the pine wood. All of our trim is pine. Uh, all of the original trim is pine, but it's a hundred years old and it's aged over time. So I needed to get as close as I could because I've got old and new in the living room. So we tried two colors. This definitely has the base. Definitely. Yeah. Looks like it's a little lighter. Okay. That's, that's that hundred year. I mean, it's been a hundred years. Yeah, it does look lighter. A little bit lighter. Could we put more pigment in something? Like mm -hmm. more. I don't know about pigment. Oh, maybe I'm using the wrong word. Like. Maybe. How do you get maybe. It? more more layers? Is that how we would get it? Uh -huh. uh, it's pretty it's good. really close. It looks pretty good. Yeah. For so I bought them because they actually looked really good. Look at this. That's substantially closer than I think I thought we were going to get. Do you see that? Like the tones are there. Now we need to get the luster and the depth. Do you know what I mean? So we're gonna sample some things while I do a and a because I asked you guys on Instagram uh, what you wanted, um, what questions you had. And we can answer questions because I'm still working on, I'm still getting adjusted back to, to Texas. Romeo and I have done a lot of two people jobs, which I've been trying to prioritize and haven't really been um, filming that in, in in a sense for a big video on my main channel, um, but still things that needed to be done. And I wanted to work on the coffee table. So we've been getting some things, um, you know, together and getting re readjusted back here. So let's do cappuccino. Was that the, ah! Ru I know russet was one of them. Yeah, russet. Oh, cappuccino. Yeah. Okay, so cappuccino and russet. This sample that she made here, this little swatch, is one layer of cappuccino, two layers of russet. So we're kind of building, you know, building, building, building. That's what we're really gonna have to do on all the wood stain. We do, do like stages of it um, to, because if you add more pigment, 
to a semi-transparent, it makes it more and more like paint. You see less and less wood grain and that's not what I want. So I wanna see the grain like this, but have more pigment. So we're doing layers, I don't know, we're, we're gonna test it out. So I wanna test one area without conditioning it. I wanna test another air area with conditioning it and then one layer or part portions of it with a sealer on it so that we can really see how we can get to this. So this is a pre-stain. I'm gonna fall off this ball, you guys. So this is a pre-stain, it's a wood conditioner. Um, it helps pine and really all woods just not feel so, or not be so blotchy and like striated. Oh my God, I seriously, I'm gonna fall off this ball. Okay. I just want to be higher. <laughs> okay, whatever. Okay, we're gonna condition in the middle. Okay, when is your next makeover video and what are you working on? So, I want to finish up the living room and I do have a cabinet in the uh, kitchen that I want to finish and I'd, I'm kind of going back and forth. Either I move into the coffee pantry back door area first or i want to go and hop into the bathroom primary bathroom that's kind of like where my head's at um i think that there is one variable that may change or push me in one area or the other um but those are kind of like all in the work so definitely like the major transformation i feel like we're gonna see is in the primary bathroom and we're gonna be working on that um very soon how many children would you like to have two <laughs> it's like, I've like, it all my life. I've always wanted to, like my brother and I, um, a boy and a girl, but I will be happy with every, anything. Like, what two? Yeah. The cappuccino has the orangey undertone that we need in this. So I think that's why at the store we tried it on the underside because we wanted to give it that base. The russet had more ash to it, so it kind of calmed that orange which is what we needed. So I think that that's kind of how, look at this color. See that orange? But when you look at it, it's the right base. You know, it just needs to be like ashed up. Like that's <laughs> like really how we're, we're doing this. How long will you be in Texas for this time around? Uh, so my plan is to, I'm definitely gonna be here through Mother's Day because my mom's here and we have to celebrate Mother's Day, obviously. So I'll definitely be here through Mother's Day, um, and like around that week. My plan was to be in California for the summer because it's so hot here. I get eaten alive by mosquitoes. And like, why? <laughs> like why put myself through that and just spend like, we, you know, the new house, we have the pool and just like getting to enjoy that and experience that, you know, for the summer. It's also my birthday and we have two weddings in California to go to. So. That was like kind of the driving factor. I was like, maybe I should just be in California for the summer through like the end of July-ish. Um, so that's kind of the plan. So right now I'll be here for about a month, and but we have tons of projects to work on for sure. And that's the unconditioned side. You see how splotchy it is? Maybe I should wait. It's been about, what, three minutes? How are you enjoying the podcast? You seem to be comfortable now. Thank you. I, I am. I am enjoying it a lot. I feel like it, the podcast, if you haven't listened to it, I didn't know what it would become, but I felt like it could be just kind of fun for me. Like just like getting to talk about all of the things outside of what, what doesn't fit in a video or what do I cut out that I just don't say because it just doesn't fit aesthetically or packaged well in a video. Um, and I feel like there's so much left out. I feel like, there's a lot to be said. And then kind of reflecting on the renovation, like, you know, what did we go through that I probably wouldn't do again? Or what did we spend? You know, I did do a, a whole episode on what we spent in the renovation so far and got really vulnerable. And, you know, it's hard sharing that type of stuff, but, um, you know, it's just, it's, it's a different platform. And sitting down to film the first podcast episode, I was super nervous because you know, like you got a mic you know, right in your face, you have like, I've got two to three cameras like pointed in the direction that I'm filming. And cam I film all the time, you know, so I'm very used to a camera, but not in a sitting setting and not with a mic 
in my face. It was very different. Um, so it just took me like I think two to three episodes to really get my groove. And then it felt super natural. And I just was like, oh my gosh, I love talking about this stuff. And having my mom on as a guest, having Drew on as a guest, and having more guests in the future, like my realtor, you know, like how, like I want her to share like tips for first time home buyers and stuff, or even second and third, like whoever, like whoever. She was so cool. So I know you guys will like her so much, um, but it's been really fun. I've been really enjoying it. So if you haven't either watched the videos or downloaded the podcast episodes, um, you can get it on your phone or anywhere you listen to podcasts. You should if you have a commute or you're cleaning your house and you want to put your earphones in just like work um yeah that was it really what it was it was kind of for the project you love and the project you regret the project i love is the bookshelves and the entryway and the kitchen oh i love a lot i guess that's good <laughs> The, I, I love a lot of the projects that we've done. Um, I really, really, really love the tile work that I did in the kitchen. I feel like that was my best tile work yet. Uh, the bookshelves are just beautiful. I love that look and that just everything about it. Uh, what I regret, there is one thing that I wanna change. And I think I will change it soon because I need to work on it and I'll show you. I didn't love it when I did it. Well, I, I have two two things that I would like to change and they're very doable. Look at this little girl. Look at this little princess girl that needs her spa day. Yes. You have an appointment. Thing number one I'd like to fix. Change. Turn on this light. I have to finish this door situation and I don't like the glass. I don't like it. I did it as a DIY. I need to fix the door too. Like I have to put the handle and stuff. I've never come back to this project. I don't like it and you know why? I don't like that it it's like a flower there and a flower there. It looks like two pieces of art in a weird way. But I do want something like more solid, like more clouded or solid because this is gonna be a closet. I don't like that either. It looks gray. I don't know if I like the tone. I don't know, something about it is weird. I need to stain around there and I wanna replace the glass. I do. I just don't like it. And I just need to pop off the trim. See, I need to, st they never stained the inside of this door. I need to finish all of this. I just take off the trim and replace it. I'm thinking, I don't know, either maybe a reeded glass. I don't know if I'm, I'm not a reed, but a, a you know, uh, is that reeded? Se yeah, reeded glass, not seated, reeded or something. I'm going to look, or I even thought, what if I just put clear glass and then behind, I put some pretty like fabric, you know, to cover in here. I feel like it would look more like the, like a cottage. I just don't like this, I don't like it. Okay, number two is the curtains in the guest bathroom. The lights are off. Okay. I liked the fabric. I got this fabric from the thrift store. I liked the fabric before I put it up and I saw the light shine through it. In person, it has a very yellow hue to it and I don't like it. I just feel like I would really love like a velvet or some kind of moodiness. I, I'm not a fan of that. Even though it brought a pattern in, I'm not a fan. I wanna change it. And that's okay. That's just like curtain. I got that from the thrift store. I made the curtains myself. It was very inexpensive. And I think it's totally acceptable to grow with your space and change things. If you don't like it, you can change it. You're not married to a decision, you know, every time you make one. I hope if it's, <laughs> those aren't big decisions. So it's like, those aren't big things. I can totally change them. But those are two things that I, I guess you would say, like regret? Let's see, let's give it a light stand. Do you want to get married first before having kids? Oh, I don't care. I could care less. I think I wanna have babies for, I'm having baby fever. Um, Romeo and I are not traditional in that sense. We don't, we've been together for 13 years, 14 years, almost 14 years. Um, and we are not traditional in any way. Like we do not care. Like I'd rather have babies. <laughs> And pay for a wedding. That's just like, that, that doesn't sound fun. Backyard plans for the cottage. Well, I'll show you what it looks like now. It's got a big pile of stuff that we need to burn, like old wood. We haven't done a burn pile since right in the beginning. Um, we, that's, you can do those out here. My neighbor's about to 
do one tomorrow with some trees that they've taken down. Uh, so after it rains, you can do burn piles out here. You just call the fire station um, and let them know that you're doing it. And it's just the way of life out here. So I guess this is the perfect opportunity to kind of recap why we bought this cottage and the plans. So we bought this cottage 2020. And it was always a plan to have um, an investment property close to my parents so that I could come and spend longer than a few days and stay in their guest bedroom um, and really get to see them for longer periods of time and also have an investment property. So the pandemic really pushed that way sooner than I thought. It, that's just how, how it happened. So I started this project. Um, I needed projects to work on. I needed content you know that was my job i had plans the backyard would be three two to three um little cottages that we could turn into airbnbs so that we would have investment properties it would make money um what if upon a one day years and years and decades from now i don't want to film and be on camera anymore um that's what we would have we would have an income it would be an investment property so that's still very much a plan we put the uh cottages on the back burner because it was really expensive to build during the pandemic um, with costs and it was really hard for me to get anyone out here to do anything because work was so readily available for tradesmen. So we pulled the plug on it for now, uh, but that's still very much the plan later on. Then in the meantime, I re Romeo and I really wanna start a family. We needed a more permanent place to put down roots uh, and that was always going to be in California. So we started the journey of finding a house, our, our home, not a project house like this, not an investment property, but a real home in California. And we've moved in there in January. So that was kind of like how it, this came about. This is an investment property for us. And um, backyard plans will include one day having those guest cottages back there but also having a divide between the house and that uh so that i don't know if i would airbnb the main house but those back there i would so there would need to be a separation this is already looking so much better conditioned like not splotchy not splotchy love all your content thank you what made you go for a home in range um really why i went with it because of the the way it looked the aesthetic it looked like a, a cottage style oven range do you know what i mean like it just looked like that now hallman and that company called i live or live or ilve actually the one that drew put the stainless steel one uh in his kitchen that is i think they're the same brand they're the same company that makes both of those it's just really pretty uh, mine's a 36 inch it came with so many different things it was a little hard to understand how to use it but once you knew how it was totally fine it was just like a learning curve so to speak but i i just really like the color and the hallman ones not the i live ones but the hallman comes in like 160 different colors you could get literally any color under the sun i mean you remember i ordered stainless steel and we got the wrong one we got antique white so it like i don't know we got a discount so it was fine so look at this color like so this is the russet color it has more you see the more dark depth ash that's why i felt like it was in between those two you know so let's put that over the top how's romeo feeling about la renovations i feel like you want to start <laughs> we actually talked to them about that like just recently you know when i say romeo hates i'm being a little bit dramatic he's very realistic about the fact that we want to turn the California home into, you know, what we want. Um, he also is very realistic that this is my job and that he's just, uh, it's not, not as big of a deal as, as I made it seem like he's like so tired, but this renovation was very different. This was like inhabitable, unlivable for a year and more, a year and a half. It will not be like that again. We will not go through that again. This was like, had holes in the walls to the outside, to 
it was totally different. So when I say he doesn't want to go through renovations again, he doesn't want to go through that again. And doing all of the demo and hard work ourselves, um, he doesn't necessarily want to do that again. So I think we would hire more tradesmen, but we have more access to them in California. Uh, so he's he's definitely coming around to the idea, especially now that he saw some of the ideas that I wanted to do to the kitchen and the dining room area. We still won't do that until we get quotes and we can actually save for it because it was literally just a major life accomplishment owning that home. So we still have projects here. I'm not looking to do that anytime soon. I'm going in with one layer of russet. And I think that this is going to add that, hopefully that ash. So this is really just doing what she did. And it definitely adds more pigment so that we get closer and closer to that depth and darkness. How does Kinsley do when traveling and not going to the bathroom for that long? So Kinsley has been traveling with me back and forth to Texas since her whole life, um, since I got her. And we've gotten a really great routine. I have to pay for her to travel. I It's not cheap either. I think it's like $90, 90 or $95 a trip. Um, and I have to check her in separately. And it's kind of like a, a thing. You know, you have to go up to like the full service counter. So it's kind of that she has to stay in her, in her, her soft carry bag underneath her, um, underneath the seat in front of me the whole time. She can't come out. Um, so, she, but she's been doing that since before I had my channels, before I had the cottage, everything back and forth to see my parents. And it's worth it because I stay here for an extended period of time. And when Romeo's not here, I still have Kinsley and she brings me so much joy. Looking at her face, I smile. You know, like it's just, we've gotten really good at her traveling um, and like her habits. So I know that she has to go to the bathroom before we board that plane. Like, or she's gonna need to at some point. She is so good about traveling. She will sleep the entire time. It's like, with a rumble, she is like putting a baby to sleep, you know, in a car or something. Like she is totally okay. Uh, and she'll sleep the whole time. We've never had any problems. There was one time that we boarded and she, it was really early flight and she would not go to the bathroom before we boarded and had to go. And I ended up having to put like a pee, I carry a pee pad with us just in case. I had to put a pee pad in her carry, carrier and she had to go, poor baby. She was like devastated. She was like traumatized. I let her walk around too while we're in the airport um, and get her moving so it tires her out. This is no conditioner. This is with conditioner. It's much lighter, but it's not splotchy. Um, this is just one coat. We're gonna let that dry. Any reno regrets, like we talked about before, things you wish you did differently, but would be too hard to change. One does come to mind, the roof line. I, that, I feel like this whole renovation, that is, I feel like that's where I faltered. That amateur, that I was an amateur, like really showed when I designed the addition, we built it and not taking into consideration how the roof line, because I did, I did the plans myself. I didn't have an architect do them. Um, so we didn't do any elevations. Like I didn't see how it would look when it was attached. Um, and that was my biggest regret. I wish that it followed the same roof line. I just, I wish it was different and it obviously cannot be changed. It's, it's done. It couldn't even be changed when it was in work in progress. Like it was like the way I designed the walls and it's fine. Do I ever look at the roof line? No, absolutely not. It's so, so not a big deal in the grand scheme of things, but like, and it's on the back of the house. You never see it. It has no effect on the curb appeal, but it does bother me. That's like a big regret. Ooh, living room mood board. I will put in my mood board and then what we use, like the inspiration, like the colors and things. Do you feel creatively drained sometimes after so many months of having to make decisions? Yes. I feel like that's very challenged. Like I can't make and do any more projects sometimes. Sometimes I'm just like, I just need to like step away because I'm not making like quality decisions anymore. You know, I'm just like overwhelmed by it all. Um, a renovation can be really overwhelming, especially when you're, you know, doing so many spaces and so much yourself. I felt really, really overwhelmed by this last visit that I was here and I did the kitchen. I took on a lot in the kitchen renovation and I did so much like towards the end that it just, I was like, I have to get out of here. Like it made me, like I didn't want to be in the cottage anymore. Like I had to leave and take a breather. It's kind of like when you need to get out of work and you need to go on a vacation because you're just 
so depleted. Taking a step back and resetting helps a lot. Do you have a discount code for a rate? I'm just dying to order a bracelet. Yes, I have one. I will put it on the screen. I think it's Mama, Ma, Ma, Mom McKenna 30. So Mama Kenna 30. I'll leave it on the screen. I think it's for 30% off. What will you do in Cali when you were there this summer, project wise? I want to have a list of things that I'd like to do. I would love to paint the cabinets in the kitchen find new hardware, because I don't think that that hardware is gonna really go with what I wanna do. So that's one project. I would love to work on the outdoor space by the pool. Uh, I think there's too much brick. I wanna add some grass, like some turf portions, and I wanna decorate that and do some things around the pool area, because we did the dining area already. Uh, and But I need to add to that. So outdoor things. Uh, I would love to build some bookshelves in the living room. That's something I wanna do. I would love to paint something. Like the white walls are driving me bonkers. I'm not a white wall, all white wall person. I need contrast, I need depth. It's like driving me insane. Uh, so we will be painting something other than the kitchen cabinets for sure. Uh, those are kind of like top of mind. I know that I want to work on Romeo's room too. I have really, I'll show you the inspiration. It's based, it's actually based on a um, clothing line that he really loves, on my Leon Dor. Super cool um, clothing company and lifestyle brand. It's really, really cool. I think they're based out of Brooklyn. Uh, this is their store in London. And it's just like so Romeo. Like Romeo and I have a very similar vintage style. And I just feel like he would throw arrive in this space and I feel like this is just so cool so I want to do that we actually have been looking for vintage basketballs that we could do this like kind of art installation with so I think this is like super dope so those are kind of projects I'd love to work on when we're back what are you most inspired by right now <sighs> I'm really inspired by the outdoors right now I feel like this new house has so many amazing like mature trees and flowers and they're all blooming um, I feel like it's bringing more color into my own life like into my wardrobe I've been wearing like yellow and like just like not not tons of color I'm still a neutral girl but like jewel tones but a pop here and there I feel like it's been inspiring me a lot I'm always really inspired by Swedish bloggers. If you've ever seen them, I'll put some of my favorites. Um, I just love their aesthetic and their use of like huga and like calmness. I've always, always, always been really inspired by that. Um, oh, that's a wasp. That's not inspiring to me at all. Okay, we're gonna go in with a second coat of russet. And then I wanna see like the difference. This top part, two coats of russet, bottom cart, Bottom part, one part, russet. We're getting there, but we're not there yet. It's not dark enough. Oh, mom. Hi, mama. Oh, I was thinking if you had an intimate dinner, but I guess not. Where are you going to dinner? Anywhere you want to go. Anywhere I want to go? Are we eating healthy or not healthy? Sure, come get me. Wash your hands. Okay, my parents are taking me to dinner. We got like 10 minutes, they're like 10 minutes away. Could you compare living in LA and living in Texas as a pro and con list? Okay, let me, how can I explain this? Texas, now Texas is big, lots of different places. I grew up in South of Houston. My parents live, you know, we're outside of San Antonio right now. Specifically in the town that I am in, I can only speak to that. Austin's gonna be so different. Dallas is gonna be so different. El Paso is gonna be so different. Everywhere is different. But I can only speak to like right here and I can only speak to living in Los Angeles as a whole. So living in this town, like this is where older couples and older people come to retire where I'm at. So I feel constantly out of place. And that's not a, shun to them they love it here thriving in their old age they're just cute they're little cute old ladies that go to to dinner together and they have lunch it's cute it's adorable but i'm not in that stage in my life and i don't have time to drive 30 minutes to the grocery store i don't have time for that I just don't. I also don't have access to things here that I would have access to in LA at this stage in my life. I don't see myself raising my kids here in a town where I don't really see anyone that they could play with. 
I, you know, like I, it, it doesn't, it doesn't fit for my lifestyle. It doesn't fit for Romeo and I's lifestyle and where we're at in life. Um, it's much slower paced. I feel here that I'm a little bit disconnected to the creativity side of my life and my job. Um, when I'm in LA, I'm constantly inspired by whatever it is. I can go to art openings. I could go to museums. I can see people in their fashion walking down the street and even in the grocery store. Um, I can go to events. I can have uh, meetings with my my team on that side, like my manager that you know, like handles my you know the business side of what I do. Um, I can have meetings about new projects in LA. I can't. I in LA here also weather difference totally different, totally different. Uh, I don't like the weather here at all. I don't like humidity. I don't like mosquitoes. I don't like extreme hot and extreme cold. California is like a constant vacation. It's what you pay for. <laughs> I knew when I was 11 and I visited California for the first time, I turned to my mom and I, I was like, she's like, I told her, I was like, I don't know why we're on this tour. We should just be going to look for my apartment because I'm moving here. And it has been that way since I was 11 and I moved there at 19. And I think that California can get, or Los Angeles in general can get a bad rap um, because they're very much thinking about the Hollywood. I don't know. Like the, the, I don't know. I, it gets a really bad rap. Like all my friends from LA are LA natives, like born and raised, uh, even Romeo, he's from, um, he grew up there, you know, he's originally from Northern California, but he grew up in LA and all my friends are LA natives and they're cool. <laughs> Not this transplant, um, trying to make it, you know, aspiring actor or actresses or musicians. Um, they're not those, they're not, they have you know, normal corporate jobs and um, they're really cool. And everyone that I've ever met um, that I've surrounded myself have been like really, really cool. So, well, I definitely have had my share of experiences um, with those types of people that give LA its its image, but that's not who I surround myself with. And so I don't, I don't judge before I know someone. So, and I love being in Texas. I love owning this cottage because I get to spend more time with my parents. That's it. That's, that's where, <laughs> that is like, they are the driving factor. Like they are the driving factor on me being here and doing this and being more present in and having a more family bond. Cause I was in California for so long working corporate jobs where I only saw my parents at Christmas and it broke my heart. Like I would only be able to travel back during Christmas. And I vowed to not have that be a reality in my life if I could. And now I get to see them and spend so much more time with them and it makes me so, so happy. So that is really a big pro and it could be written in bold, bold letters. Also the cost of living is cheaper here. That's a big pro, <laughs> but you don't have the constant vacation weather um, and all of the things that I listed, but both are very special for very different reasons and you just have to live what, where it makes you happy and where you thrive and where you feel like you wouldn't regret not being somewhere, you know? Okay, they just pulled up. I'm gonna go eat and then we'll continue our Q&A. You guys, good morning. So last night I got back and it was like late, it was dark. So I watched TV with Kinsley and then it, in the middle of the night, it poured down rain. The wind was so crazy. Um, the weather is <laughs> always just crazy. It's very unpredictable. Poured down rain. I'm so disappointed that I guess the wind blew the rain underneath the patio and it got my coffee table wet and I've got splotches on it now. <sighs> I'm gonna have to sand it now and seal it again. I don't, I don't know how all that's gonna go. So stay tuned on the coffee table. It's like 48 degrees right now, which is wild. It's so cold and it's supposed to rain on and off all week. So indoor projects it is. I wanna answer a few more questions um, before. Um, I upload this video later today. What's your ethnicity? I'm always curious about that kind of thing. So I am majority French. I'm of French descent. My, on my father's side, 
all French on my mother's side, majority French, part Irish. Uh, Romeo is Filipino majority and with a little bit of German. Think about that. Picture my kids. <laughs> like I always do. Like, oh, love. I've noticed that you don't seem to have any family photos up in your homes. Why not? I'm not a family photo on display kind of person. I, I don't know. I'd rather a really pretty photo album that's on a bookshelf that I can pull out and look at. I don't like frames with, I don't, I, I don't know. I think, comment down below if you are or aren't. I feel like you just are or aren't kind of person. I, I, don't, I don't like family pictures out. Not that I don't love my family by any means. I don't even like pictures of me out. <laughs> so how do you organize your schedule and do so many things? When do you edit? I'm always doing something. I'm a very, I'm highly like active. I do a lot of stuff. I mostly edit early, early mornings. I'm an early morning editor. So I'll wake up and sit at my computer with my coffee just like this and just edit. And I wanna do a whole video on like product. I get this question a lot actually. And I would love to do a whole video on like productivity and how I'm a big planner and organizer and how I keep, you know, all these projects going not get overwhelmed or feel crazy by it um so i'd like to do a, i'm gonna do a whole video on that for sure estate sales are those when someone has died i'm from england uh, we don't have these um okay so yes you could think that and more than often that might be true but there are other circumstances where that isn't the case maybe a older couple is downsizing or a person is downsizing and would like to move through the majority of their furniture and things that they don't want anymore or they're moving and they'd like to not take the things with them they'll have an estate sale maybe um someone is older and they've been uh, maybe moved to a, a care facility um, th that they will live in. They don't need their stuff anymore. So it's not always the case that someone has passed, but that is, you know, kind of what happens. The family needs to move their stuff so that they can sell the house. That's that's most mostly. Your next trip. Mom, Romeo, and I are going to Paris at the beginning of September. I'm very excited. We thought about going around this time, like May, but with the um, the riots and things that were happening in Paris, and it was just like really short notice, uh, we decided to, put, and we'd already been in spring, so I wanted to experience Paris in fall, and we will be going to the south of France. So leave your recommendations. I'm gonna be planning our trip really, really soon. Okay, so this question has popped up a lot, especially on the video that I did in LA of decorating our bedroom. Why do you use the bedroom downstairs in the new house rather than the upstairs one? I really like the bottom bedroom. One, it's on the bottom floor. We don't have to go upstairs to our bedroom. Two, it has an ensuite, so it has the bathroom attached and it's all one unit. We leave the doors open and it's just us and it feels like we're living in a huge loft, which is really cool. I just like the layout and the flow. I like being on like next to where I can just have easy access to like the kitchen and the living area. And I also think that it's the room with the most character. It has the upper windows and I just, I just love it. I couldn't imagine. And when we think about the future and having kids, I don't want a kid on the bottom floor and we're upstairs. I think I've always known a primary suite to be on the bottom floor, not, I think that's a newer, I don't know why I have always thought that. Maybe that's just how my parents have always done it. I love having the bedroom on the bottom floor. I wouldn't want our, our primary bedroom upstairs for sure. How do I buy some vintage sweatshirts from Romeo? Uh, he has all of his stuff on Depop and you can follow him on Instagram as well. If you see something, it's at Mostly Vintage LA. Are we able to see more behind the scenes of your mom and her design process? Yes, I'm so excited for them that they're finally starting this project after so many years. I think it's been like, five years in the making um, from like dreaming up to designing to getting my mom designed the house herself like from scratch and had an architect draw professionally her ideas um, or really just render it from her drawing to a real plan and they are finally like mapping out the land and going to be breaking ground um, hopefully soon I, they're on their own timeline you know so it's I don't think it's gonna be I, I probably will film little things that they do and then kind of package them together in a bigger video for you guys. But I'm really, really excited for them and I'm really excited for us to get to see the process and they're spending all the money, <laughs> not us. 
How is your self-confidence and do you ever struggle in this area? I am very, I, my whole life, I've been a pretty self-confident person and I really contribute that to um, my mom and the way that I was raised and how seeing how confident she is and how she was always letting me express who I was and have confidence in who I was and my ideas and my clothing. And I think that everyone struggles with self-confidence at one point or another, and I definitely have. I think a lot of those instances came when I was younger and maybe in high school, I struggled. I remember I was the girl that didn't start, my mom didn't want me to start wearing makeup um, very young and I remember all the girls in school would wear makeup and I felt like I wasn't as pretty as them uh, I do remember that I remember not really understanding my style yet and wearing some questionable things that I got made fun of but I was never bullied in school uh, I had friends and I had overall a good experience in school uh, it wasn't it wasn't bad but I think most of my self-confidence kind of like I struggled in that area and then when I got into fashion I when I got out of like when I was in college and then I was getting into fashion I feel like that added a whole nother layer of like I needed to be dressed like I fit the part and all of that and and I think it's so crazy like now I literally dress in like work clothes all the time and it's such a contrast from what I used to do for so long and the way that I used to dress when I was in fashion. I Part of me hates it. I, I want to dress better. I, wa I don't want to be wearing work clothes all the time, but that's the nature of my job. Now that I'm older, I'm 34 and I don't struggle with I think if I struggle with any self-confidence, it's it's such a small portion and because when, as you get older, you just become more and more confident and true to who you are and realize that no one's opinion matters of you at all, uh, like other than yourself and, and your loved ones. Like I obviously care very much what Romeo thinks of me. And I obviously care very much what my mom can, thinks of me. And that's about all, <laughs> you know? Like obviously like they would never hurt my self-confidence and surrounding your, yourself with good people. But as you get older, self-confidence becomes something that's like, I feel a lot stronger. And that I feel like that's where I am now. And I am I know who I am. I know what I like. I know what I don't like coming through like through experience that's why i can get on camera like this i just woke up you guys i brushed my teeth and made my coffee and i'm talking to you i have no makeup on i didn't even brush my hair because that those things don't matter to me what matters to me is that i show up and i'm my authentic self and you guys are just here sitting on the couch with me in the morning if i suffered in self-confidence i would not be sitting here like that i would have been up putting my makeup on getting perfect for the camera I don't have time for that. <laughs> like, no thanks. Which house does Kinsley prefer? LA or Texas? Um, excuse me, they would like to ask you a question. I know for a fact that Kinsley likes the LA home more for one very specific reason. She gets to go outside. Here, she there's too many tools. There's too many things that we have been left undone. And with the weather and things, it and with mosquitoes, she doesn't go outside here at all. She doesn't go in the grass. I let her out on the patio, but that's about it. In LA, we go on walks. She gets to go out every morning and run around off leash, free. You know, it's like she just runs around the pool, does her business, sniffs around, assesses the land comes in, takes a nap, we go on an afternoon walk. I feel like she thrives, she gets so excited. She knows the word like outside now, like she knows it identifies with her being off leash. And I think that she absolutely loves it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this vlog. I haven't done a Q and A in a while and I really, really enjoyed this. I feel like we have, you guys got to see a lot of inspiration um, that I'm gonna be working on soon too. And now I have to figure out what's wrong with my coffee table and I have to sand it down. And I think maybe since it's so cold, I'm gonna have to bring the coffee table inside and finish the sealer in here. <gasps> the things that I have to figure out today, you know, but I will see you guys very, you'll see that video very soon. And of course, more vlogs this week, more renovation content. We're gonna be doing some fun things. So stay tuned. Bye guys. You're a very sleepy girl in the morning.